Pierce English Lutheran Church and friends, welcome to worship on this beautiful Sunday summer morning. A few announcements about our life together. Our Acts Bible study does continue tonight. I believe we're on chapters 19 and 20. Um, we've had people joining us even last week, so if you would like to join in, please do join in. Uh, you would probably need to email intern Jamie, intern Pastor Jamie at gmail.com to get the Zoom link. You can either join tonight at 7 o'clock or on Wednesday at 5 o'clock. Yesterday we gathered around the graveside of Chuck Horn and celebrated his life. We did record that service and celebration of his life. Um, it is on the YouTube site, so if you'd like to join in and celebrate his life and give thanks to God for him, please do do that as well. I believe those are announcements today with one exception. Intern Jamie has only a couple more weeks left, and she said she would love to golf with anybody who would love to golf. So give her a call and uh, meet her on the golf course. With that, we prepare our hearts and our minds for worship this day. Good morning. We continue with our confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and from one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given for us to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins, and as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth, and it shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the thing which I sent it. For you shall go out with joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands, Instead, the thorn shall come to the cypress. Instead, the briar shall come to the myrtle. And it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign they shall not be cut off. Here ends the first reading. Our second reading is from Romans. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, 
For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in likeness and sinful flesh to deal with sin, he condemned sin to the flesh so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those living according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live in according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. And for this reason, the mind has set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are in flesh. You are in spirit, since the spirit of God dwells within you. Here in, oh, there's more. Anyone who does, does, not, does, does not have the spirit of Christ doesn't belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit of life because of righteousness, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies and also through his spirit that dwells in you. Here ends the second reading. out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. Since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears Listen, hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the hearts. That is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution rises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but cares, the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the world, and it yields nothing. But as for that what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the word of our Lord. Let us pray. We plow, plow the fields and scatter the good seed on the land, but it is fed and watered by God's almighty hand who sends the snow in winter and the warmth to swell the grain, the breezes and the sunshine in soft, refreshing rain. You, O oh God, are the maker of all things near and far. You paint the wayside flower, you light the evening star. The 
winds and waves obey you, by you the birds are fed. Much more to us, your children, you give our daily bread. So we thank you, our Creator, for all things bright and good. The seed time and the harvest are our life, our health, our food. No gifts have we to offer for all your love and parts, but what you most would treasure our humble, thankful hearts. Amen. Well, if there was ever a text that kind of fit me and where I am in my life today, it would be this Matthew text. You see, I grew up in a farming community. We lived out in the country in a parsonage that was halfway between the two congregations that my father served. There were 24 acres, and you've heard me talk about the sheep we've had. But in the summertime, we had this huge garden. And for as long as I can remember, it was my one of my responsibilities to tend to that garden. You know, there's nothing I like more these days. And even then, than to be in the sun with it beating down on my back as I'm pulling weeds. Somehow, that fills my heart. And being part of a farming community and have, being a child of people that were raised on the farm, I remember every day after eating our noon meal, which we called dinner, we would go out to see how the plants were growing in the garden. Well, move ahead a few years, and my husband and I moved out into Lake Country, and I wanted a garden, and he will attest to this, how many times we planted, how many times we put dirt into this lovely plot. Things would grow green and lush, and there would be not one single tomato or cucumber, because we were in the woods. It was a good reminder that what things need to grow isn't just lushness, but sunshine and heat in order to produce. Well, after a few years of that, I gave up on that as well. Moved forward a few more years, and we moved to southern Wisconsin. It's a long story how our backyard developed, and you don't need to know the details of that, but today, half of our backyard is garden, raised gardens. And I was saying to Greg earlier last week when I was home for the 4th of July weekend, the garden is beautiful this year. It's amazing. We've had baby tomatoes already. I'm on the second planting of radishes. We had our first cucumber last week. It just fills my heart with joy to be raising this garden. But you know, it's kind of like the parable that Jesus talked about here. Because I have to move things around at least every couple of years so that if the tomatoes are in the same box three years in a row, they don't do well. A couple of years back, for some reason, my zinnia 4x4 bed got over-fertilized. And for the last three years, nothing, I mean, not even a weed, has grown in that box. This year, they are growing again, and they're lush and high and flowering. You see, it takes a while for things to take root. It takes the right amount of fertilizer. It takes the right amount of moving things around. It takes the right amount of heat and rain to have things grow. So these examples that Jesus gives about seeds is actually kind of a hard story for me. A few weeks back, Daniel, who's now a long ways away from us, we are moving things out into the West Lawn worship, and I stopped and I said, I just don't get why things have to grow in the cracks of the sidewalk. 
And so he and I are standing there looking at this lovely little weed growing in the crack of the sidewalk. He goes, yeah, why not move 12 inches that way or 12 inches this way? But no, you got to grow up in between two pieces of concrete where it's hard to grow. You know, sometimes things do pop up in the sidewalk. A couple years ago, all of a sudden in the spring of the year, I had all these volunteer pansies. I have no idea how they got there, but they were gorgeous. We don't know what happens to seeds always. Or where the squirrels think when I plant tulip bulbs in the fall, where I find them in the spring, if I find them at all, because they don't agree with my planting scheme. You know, Seeds and bulbs, it's an interesting thing. What Jesus is trying to use the metaphor here is to say that the word of God is like a seed. Sometimes it's scattered onto hard ground and the birds or the squirrels take it away. Sometimes it's planted amongst the thorns. In this country, part of the country, it'd be the thistles, right? And they get choked out because the strength of that thistle or that thorn. Sometimes, sometimes, seeds get planted on good soil, even when you don't know that they've been scattered there. And they grow. I've been thinking a lot about this whole seed metaphor in the midst of this pandemic that we are living in right now. You know, we in 21st century America are incredibly impatient. We're used to saying, I need a new refrigerator, and I go out and buy one. They bring the new one, they take the old one out, and away we go. I need a new pair of shoes, or I want a new pair of shoes, or I really like that pair of shoes, don't need them. I plop down my debit card and I hope the door I go with them. But the pandemic has done something to us as a people. It has caused us to sit back, to shut our doors, to look at the world somewhat suspect. makes us appreciate that which we do have in those times when we can gather out in the middle of a backyard, six feet apart from each other, each in our own chairs with our masks on, and having conversation. It has caused us to kind of put life on pause. And to actually think about what we're doing, what we have, and where we will go, and who we will be with. It has caused us to take a deep breath. And in the middle of it, I think part of the question that we as human beings, notice that word being, what has caused us as human beings to question and to wonder on, about and reflect on is, what does it mean to be a human doing, and what does it mean to be a human being? Because I think we're pretty good at the doing part. We're not so good at the being part. And in the middle of this whole seed metaphor of Jesus, I think the question is, what does it mean? to be a human being. What is Jesus calling us to, to be, to think, to reflect on, so that when we do get back to doing, we do good things and right things. I think we can't hear any of these stories the same way today as we could have five months ago. Life has changed. And I would venture to say boldly that faith has changed. 
This God in whom we believe and follow and trust is shaping and reshaping us and planting us in different ground these days. This God who brings the rain and the snow and the sunshine and the cool, this God who comes at us over and over again, moving first. As it says in Isaiah, the sun and the rain are like my word. It does not return to me empty. Today, we are called to be seeds. And I don't want to go down the path of which seed are you, because that is not helpful. But maybe, maybe today, this God is coming to us with these stories to remind us, to help us to interpret, to help us to reflect upon what does it mean to be a human being created in the image of our God, to be in relationship with all of creation, with each other and with our God, maybe. Just maybe. That's what these words are for us today. To remind us that our God calls us to be first and then to do. To be a seed first and then be a plant. Maybe. Just maybe, that's what those words mean for us this day. Amen. Let us continue with singing a beautiful hymn, number 512, Lord, Let My Heart Be Good Soil. We'll sing it twice. confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. 
He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And now, called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Gracious God, your word has been sown in many ways and many places. Today we pray for missionaries, for New Start congregations, for congregations in redevelopment, those in the call process, and congregations discerning new ways to be church together. Inspire us by their witness to the faith that we share. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Creating God. The mountains and hills burst forth into song, and the trees and fields clap their hands in praise. We pray for the birds and animals who make their home in the trees, and for land stripped bare by deforestation. Empower us to sustainably use what you have given. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Reigning God, we pray for our nation's leaders. Increase their desire for justice and equality. We pray for our enemies. Bridge the chasms that divide us and guide authorities to a deep and lasting peace. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Abiding God, care for all who are in need. For those who are doubting, renew faith. For those who are worrying, provide release. For those who are struggling, ease burdens. For those in fear, give hope. And we especially remember those in need of your healing today, Dave and Elsie, and all those we name in the silence of our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Renewing God, revive your church in this place. Nourish and nurture the seeds you have planted that we might grow as disciples. Replace what has been depleted. Sustain our ministries and deepen relationships with the wider community. Hear us, O God. Your word is great. Eternal God, we give thanks for all who have died. And today, we especially thank you for the life of Chuck Horn. Comfort us in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection. Hear us, O God. Your word is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for any words. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Thanksgiving for the word. 
that recalls the story of God in the world. At the end of each part, I'm going to say, for your word of life, O God. And the response is, we give you thanks and praise. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word, you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and you call us to witness Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith. Increase our hope and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. And now gathered into one by that same Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. We will conclude with Almighty God, your word is cast in number 516.